Father, if we have found favor and grace in your sight during this second watch, according to your decree and command, by grace and favor, what I see you do is what I will do. What I hear you say is what I will say. Your decree is we should touch your heart and agree with your hands each time we come on. On earth, we should agree, but in heaven, we should touch. Touch heaven and agree on earth. Therefore, Father, who art in heaven, Hello, be your name, Jehovah, I am that I am. Hello, be your name. Your kingdom come tonight. Your face, Father. Your will, Father. Your heart, Father. Your hand, Father. Your name be done. On earth. As it is in heaven. Give us this day. Wow. Thank you, Father. Give us this day. Daily rest. Daily joy. Daily peace. Daily comfort. Daily reward. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us of our trespasses as we release those who have trespassed against us. Yes, Father. Mm -hmm. You gave Jesus the keys to the kingdom. You also gave Jesus the keys to death and hell to release the captives, Father. Right now, I stand in the name of Jehovah Yahweh. If anyone on this line, Father, you said whatever we lose on earth shall be loose in heaven, Father. I touch and agree according to your word, Father. You said in your word, when two or three gather in your name, you are in our midst. We gather tonight in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Loose, Father, tonight, that which you have decreed for 2024. Rest, release, reward, revelation. I lose it in their destiny. I lose it in their purpose. I lose it in their identities. I lose it in their intimacies. Yes, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Yes, Jesus. Thank you. I see each and every one of you, your hearts right now. It's like a door. And I see the Lord Jesus Christ standing at the door of your hearts right now. Thank you, Father. He said, Behold, I stand at the doors tonight. Tonight, my reward is with me. Mm. Holy Spirit says, in the natural, when UPS comes to the door, to drop the package. Whoosha. That's Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Holy Spirit. When you PS come to the door, mm -hmm. it has your name on the package, my father. Whew. Yes, Lord. Jesus is coming with your package from the Father. Your name is written on it. Receive it now. Behold, he stands at the door and he's knocking. You know why he's knocking? Not only does he want to come in and dine with you, 
but he's coming with his reward. It is your time and it is your season. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords is at the doors of your heart. If anyone hears the shepherd's voice, my sheep know my voice, and a stranger's voice they will not follow. Yes, Lord. Give us sheep hearts to hear your voice. Sha, yes, Lord. I see the Lord Jesus Christ on the line right now. Mm -hmm. The keys that are in his hand are gold. Golden keys are in his hands. And he's standing. The door, right, is like a human heart. It's closed. But he, he's putting, he's putting right now the key in the heart. The doorknob of the heart to open. Yes, Lord. He looked at me and said, tell my sons and daughters. They should give me their heart. A new. All I want from each and every one of you tonight is your heart. Mm -hmm. Yes, Jesus, I will tell them. Give me your heart and I'll give you my heart in a new way. Yes, Lord. Give me your hands. And I'll take you places your eyes have not seen. I will take you places your ears have not heard. I will take you places your heart has not perceived. Give me your feet. Mm -hmm. And I'll wash your feet to be part of what I'm doing. Yes, Jesus. Written on his thigh is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. That's the name. He's coming in this time and season to each and every one of you. I see written on his thigh. Thank you, Holy Spirit. King of kings and Lord of lords. The king has got off his throne and is coming to visit those right now in this time and season who will receive him as king and lord. You know when the landlord wants to come? Comes to your house. Yes, Lord. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. The landlord has come. Yes, Lord. The landlord. Everybody take note of that. Thank you, Jesus. The landlord is here. He said the land is the mind and soul of a man. The, ma the, the, the land mm -hmm. is the soul. Yes, Lord. The landlord Written on his thigh, my friends. I see it. It's on his thigh. You, you can see through his robe as I'm talking to you. King of kings and lord of lords. The king. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You know, Holy Spirit has a very great sense of humor. He said, remember, coming to America, when the king came, ah, yes, Lord. The king was received with honor. Look, listen, and learn. This week, this week, pay attention to the door of your heart. Don't let your heart be troubled by the things of this world. Pay attention to your heart because you're going to hear a voice knocking. Discern the voice on your heart because he's coming. Don't let your heart be choked. Yes, Lord, I will tell them. He said, tell them about the third group. Their hearts were choked by the cares of life. Don't let your heart be troubled. You know what he said? Let not your heart be troubled. I've overcome the world. When your heart is troubled, you cannot have a visitation to even get the manifestation. That's why he says, thank you, Holy Spirit, for interpretation. 
That's why he's saying, give me your heart anew. That way he can dress and keep your heart from trouble. In this time and season. So everybody decree it right now with your mouth. And in your heart. I receive the latest visitation from Jesus. He's coming. Say, Jesus, I receive your visitation. I thank you for your visit. Don't just visit me. Can you please stay as long? You don't just want him to visit you. You know, when someone visits you, they got to go. But do you want him to stay longer? Then you got to prepare the house. You know how someone will stay longer in your house? Comfort. Someone will stay longer. Well, let me not just say someone in the natural. Jesus will stay longer with you if you learn how to receive him with love. You can't be distracted while you are in the house like Mary. Sorry, Martha. See, Jesus came in the house. Martha was distracted. She couldn't receive from him. Learn of Mary. See, Martha missed her time of visitation because she was troubled by many things in her heart. You see? She missed what Jesus was going to do and say. But look at Mary. Look how she received Jesus. She stopped everything she was doing because she was doing things with her sister, Martha, before Jesus came. You realize she stopped everything she was doing just to tend to the king. That's a real bride. A real bride, a real wife of the king will stop everything she's doing when the king comes in to tend to him only. Mary learned how to do that. That's why nothing was taken from her. If you don't want anything taken from you in this season, learn of Mary. Learn of Mary who sat at the feet of Jesus. Listen to what Jesus said. One thing is necessary. Do you know the one thing that's necessary in this season? Listen to what Jesus said to Mary. One thing is necessary, Martha, that Mary has chosen to sit at my feet. Do you know the number one thing that's necessary right now? It's the feet of Jesus. Not at the table of fools. Mm. Psalm 1 verse 1. He who sits at the table of fools. See? Yes, Lord. Pre Holy Spirit, prepare us so when Jesus comes to our house, we're not busy doing things and then we miss him. Do you know Jesus can come to your house, but you're so busy doing things in the house? You can't sense his presence in the house. I'm talking about your natural homes. This is not spiritual only. He's a man. Yes, Jesus, I will tell them. He said, prepare them because I'm coming. No, I'm not talking about next year. I am coming. It's our preparation. How do you prepare? I'm coming with my reward. That's what he said in Psalm 22. I'm coming quickly with my reward. I'll reward you according to the works you have done. See, what work do you have to do in the house for your husband? When a man, okay, let's look at a date, a house date. When that man is coming, don't you want to put on your best clothes? Don't you want to prepare the house? Mm -hmm. Yes, Lord. Before I share with you the letter of the Father, this is what Jesus is saying now. How are you going to prepare your heart to receive him? Yes, Lord, I will tell them. He said, the two main distractions in this season. 
Mm-hmm. We project. Take note of that. Projects. Busyness. What's keeping you so busy? You, can't, you cannot quiet down to spend time with him. Watch this. Even with what Jesus gave you, if you are so busy with what he gave you, more than him, it's an idol. It's an idol. Many are busy doing things Jesus said they should do. And they don't have time for him. That's an idol. In order for you to receive from the king of kings and lord of lords, behold, he's standing at the door. He's knocking. Do you know, do you know, do you know why we don't hear his voice? Busyness. What are you so busy with in your heart that he don't have, watch this, full custody of your heart? Does he have full custody of your heart? As we are speaking, we should all examine our hearts right now. Search my heart, Jesus. Sorry, David said, search my heart. Can everybody hear me? Want to make sure? Now we can. Okay, yes, awesome. Can. He said, tell them right now, distractions and projects are going to be the two main things that's going to make many miss what he's doing now. What are your distractions? And what projects have you got your hands so busy with? And don't give illegitimate excuses, I hear him saying. I will not accept illegitimate excuses in this season. Oh, God understands. No, you cannot use that religious rhetoric. It was illegitimate excuses as to why they missed the banquet. Look. Listen and learn. I'm going to share with you the three letters of the Father, but Jesus is the first. He's the way. He's the truth. He's the, see, he knows he's the life. Today he was teaching me. He said, teach what you see me doing to my sons and daughters on the line. Jesus begins to do, and then he teach. See, what is he doing now? He, watch, you see, the ask, the seek, and the knock. See these three? You say, where is he right now? Is he asking for you? Is he seeking for you? Or is he knocking? Where is he in these three right now? He's at the knocking. He's not asking. He's not seeking. He's knocking. Each and every one of us that's on the Zoom right now, we must do in this time and season a heart examination. What is so busy going on in your heart that's manifesting in your hands that you're not fulfilling the king's first love, which is time? Time. It's his love language I'm about to share with you. This is what he said today. This is what we're going to do every time we come on the Zoom. And please, even in your personal time with him in secret, learn this. It's going to help you. 
Now I fully understand when he said, touch and agree. He even broke it down more. Touch my father's heart and agree with his words. Not only that, he said, you have to touch heaven and agree on earth. Say that again. If two or three, that's a Trinity movement. What did we hear in Rosh Hashanah? Trinity, triple. Trinity movement in this time and season, right? Okay, so in this time and season, it's the triple season. Two to three must touch and agree. Mm. For it to be done of the Father for you, you have to touch heaven, agree on earth, but also you need two to three on earth that can touch heaven with you, my God, and agree on earth with you. In this season, he's not doing things singular. He's doing things plural, trinity, triple, in name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. They touched and agreed. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit has touched and agreed already. But you see, that's heaven. On earth, you need two to three to touch and agree. If you want the Father's will to be done, let's look at Jesus' life. Do you realize when he was going to the Mount of Transfiguration, how many did he take? He took three. In the Garden of Gethsemane, you see, mountain, garden, he took three. When he was on the cross suffering, how many was at his feet? Three. In time, I want to share with you the visitation I had with Jesus and his mother, Mary. All the women in the world got to hear what she said. In time, not now, because it's very, 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 very heavy and weighty. Mary, Jesus' mother, the closest woman to the Father in heaven. You got to hear when, when you're taken to heaven and Jesus introduced his mother to you, God. You got to hear the wisdom coming from a mother. That you don't take it lightly. Because many women on earth are behind what she said. You can't look at no woman on earth. Can I tell you what Jesus said? Just one. It goes for the women. Jesus said, from beginning to the end, there is no woman on earth that has been born. Watch this. That was excellent and imperfect like Mary, his mother. Not even a man. Do you know who the closest person is to the Father in heaven? This will shock us. Jesus' mother. So if you don't hear wisdom from a mother who gave birth to Jesus, your Lord and Savior, his mother. See, some of us need these kind of visitations in heaven. And when the mother of all mothers. Hey, my, let me tell you, Jesus, right? I can't get enough of him. He always makes me cry every time i see him a new form of he just be blowing my blowing my socks off man that humility and meekness i, I said to all of you in the line look listen and learn oh <laughs> if you don't build your life on humility and meekness you know you cannot get his attention because that's that's who he is and you see it in action when you meet him. The way he introduced his mom, I said, whoa, I need to treat my mom more like that. Mm -hmm. I need to treat my mother on earth more like that. The reverence and honor he has for his mother. 
I didn't know she was the first ever bride. Do you know Mary? Not It's not only Jesus' mother. It's Jesus' first bride. Mm -hmm. And she's the mother of all the brides on earth. She's also the mother of all the sons on earth. She's the closest person, apart from Jesus. You say, who's next? I was shocked. You would think, okay, Moses, Abraham. Nope. Mary. She's the only woman who went beyond Eve and Lilith. Jesus looked at me and said, all the saints from Adam to now, my mother, is the most holy. The most loving. The most sacrificing. Can I talk more about how Jesus honored his mother? Because I got to tell you this. If you don't honor your father and mother, your days on earth is not going to be long. You say, how is this important? Check your relationship with your mom and your father right now. If you're not honoring them the way Jesus honored his father in heaven and his mother, you're falling short. I knew for sure, he, Jesus didn't tell me, but because of the relationship we have, I knew what I knew he was gently rebuking me about my relationship with my natural mom on earth. When I saw his relationship with his mom, I knew immediately he was saying, my mother's name is Mary. Your mother's name is Mary. Watch this. The correlation. Your mother could not have a child. You are her firstborn. Mary could not have a child. I'm her firstborn. You were born in a time where abortion was instituted on earth. When I was born, abortions was also instituted. See, just will take you back in time and space to when you were born to let you know the time and season you were born in just like him. But I need to share with you how he honors his mom in heaven. Huh. Humility and majesty, unspeakable. How is your relationship with your mom and dad on earth? You got to fix it. I've seen how the, I've seen how Jesus reverence and speaks highly of Father God. I've also seen, not in fullness, how he honors Joseph, his natural father. He's in heaven. But the way he honors his mother, I've never seen before. And I knew he was talking to me about your relationship with your natural mom on earth. See, some of us want answers from God, but our relationship with certain people is not right. And he will visit you. He's not going to correct you. But when he's doing it, it's a correction. I need to say it again. When you see Jesus doing things, right? How do I say it? Automatically, it's a rebuke to an area you haven't been paying attention to. The way he was honoring his mom, his, his mother. I'm talking about his natural mother. I knew when I come back on earth, I got to honor my mom the same way. If I want the promise of the father. Honor your father and mother that your days on earth will be long for this commandment. Watch this. Comes with a promise. It comes with a promise. How many of us want the, the promise of the father? How is your relationship with your natural father and your natural mother and your spiritual father and your spiritual mother? You're falling short. And I've seen Everybody, not just reading the Bible. No, 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 no. Mary was wearing a very beautiful blue robe. You know, blue represents heaven. Blue. Her hair, glorious. The most beautiful woman. She's been glorified by the Father. You know why? Let me tell you. This will help the women. One, 
he chose at a young age to give birth to the Trinity on earth. Look, listen, and learn. This goes for the women. She chose. First, I saw it in heaven where before Jesus would be born on earth, Mary was called, so Mary and Elizabeth was called to the courts of heaven. And the father revealed the plan and the purpose to them in the spirit before in the natural, she said yes. So her spirit mm -hmm, was called to heaven and Elizabeth. In the courts of heaven, they were called. And Mary said, yes. And then angel Gabriel said, I'm going to come with you. That's why Gabriel came to Mary on earth. Because it was already agreed in heaven. Mary said, yes. Do you know how many women said no? You know, you wonder why Mary is highly favored among women. The angel said, you know why she's highly favored among women? There were many women called. They said no. But a 17-year-old virgin had nothing to lose. I want to honor Jesus' mother the same way. And I want to honor my mother the same way. Thank you, mom, for giving birth to me. Oh, I call her immediately. <laughs> mm -hmm. The way Jesus honors his mother, I said, I see why he's at the right hand of the father. I'm going to show you how his relationship with his mom from when he was born to when he died plays a major role if you're going to be rewarded by the father. You got to honor your mother. Before I didn't know, I, just, I was just reading it and I was taken immediately in a trance to the courts of heaven before the foundation of the world. The plan was already in motion that Adam and Eve was going to fail and that the father needed a woman who would be greater than, me, sorry, greater than Eve to bring his son on earth. It was already agreed in heaven before it materialized in Matthew. That's why there was a 400 year silence between Malachi and Matthew. In that silence, do you know what was going on? There were visitations. Out of all the women in Israel, a 17-year-old virgin said yes. Because how are you going to be pregnant without a man? You know the criticism that's going to come? Especially in those times, women were ostracized by men. She said yes to the Father's will in spite of... See, I'm going somewhere with this. What Jesus said to me in the end, rewards are going to come. But how you honor your mother. I was shocked. You know, you think it's, oh, yes, Lord. You know, what the father sees in secret, you reward in open. Yeah, in the secret, how are you honoring your mother? It says open rebuke is better than secret love. I was shocked. How is your relationship with your mother? That's promise. Your relationship with your father is inheritance. So do you see why many people miss their inheritance and their promise? Honor. Lack of honor. The father and Jesus will not give you an inheritance or a promise if you don't honor your father and your mother. This is very important, please, what I'm teaching you. I'm going to continue to tell what Jesus said about his mother. She was standing there very meek and quiet. When The definition of meekness and quietness is her. A woman of a meek and quiet spirit. Oh my God. And Mary began to tell me about her life when she was on earth. The sacrifices and sufferings she went through with Jesus. And how she was rewarded in heaven. The closest to the father. You would think it's a man, right? Oh, it's Mary. She's in the most holy place. By the way, the only woman there. 
Not even Mary Magdalene is there. How many of you know about Mother Teresa? She's in, she's in the holy place, but she's not in the most holy, most holy holies. She also was a mother, but she's in the holy place. I have a, I have a responsibility. All the women on earth, many are wasting their time in unnecessary relationships, wasting their time, wasting their wombs. Have you ever seen Mary cry? It's different when she's crying. Have you seen a woman? Oh, women, you know what I'm talking about when you're crying. But when the mother starts crying, you know who she was crying for? The women on earth. Let me tell you what she told me about her life. And the ultimate price she had to pay carrying Jesus. Carrying the Holy Spirit. Harry and the Father. Do each and every one of you understand on this line that the Father, Jesus, and Holy Spirit wouldn't have been able to come on this earth if Mary did not agree? My God, somebody better catch that. She touched the Father's heart and agreed. What was she rewarding? The closest woman to the Father in heaven. Her robe is blue. The one who loves the most. Blue represents love. Green is meekness. Yellow is wisdom. Red is sufferance. She had all the colors. But the one that was dominant was the blue. You say, how did she love the father the most? She went beyond Eve and Lilith. She went beyond Sarah. She went beyond any other woman of the old. And even now, Jesus said, she's now your mother. You know how Jesus told John, John, your mother, mother, your son, that's how it was. She's now your mother. Y'all, You don't know how exciting that is to be, watch this, the one who gave birth to Jesus in the natural, it's now your mother. So Jesus' mother, you see, she's now, now your mother. I'm going to tell you how John, in the book of Revelations, how he got the revelations he got from the Father and Jesus who paid the price for him. It was a woman. Uh, let me say this boldly. And all the daughters on the line of Holy Way, if you're going to be about the father's business, that's if you're willing and obedient, you, you're going to have to become like Mary and beyond. That's the standard of Holy Way. Nothing less. Her, 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 man, her heart, right? I asked her mom because now she's my mother. How? How did you do it? A woman, how did you beat all the odds? How did you pay such an ultimate price? Listen to what she said about her life. You see, watch this. If you're going to be trusted with souls and hearts on earth, especially women and children in this end times, Jesus has to take you into heaven to hear from those who were before you. Hear the wisdom from the wells of the fathers and mothers that were before you. She started when she was 17. I, I don't want to start from when she was seven. It would take us a long time. Let me just start from when she was 17. How is your honor for your mother on earth and your father? major. Anybody who said, oh, I don't need a mother. I don't need a father. I don't need a spiritual father. I don't need a spiritual mother. You would never reach the father realm 
you will never reach your destiny and your purpose because 50% of your destiny and your purpose on this earth is in your father and your mother. Especially your father because they carry your birthright and inheritance and identity. That's why you see all the men of old, David and Solomon. David was a king. His son became an emperor. Greater than his father. How? Watch his prayer when he was praying. Lord God, remember my father David. Ah. He honored his father before the father. That's, what he, that's how he became the wealthiest and richest man on earth. It was his honor for King David. He came into his inheritance. He came into his inheritance and destiny and assignment and purpose because of mm -hmm, God's covenant with King David. This goes for everyone on the line. Do you want to hear ancient secrets? Do you want to hear about ancient lineages? Do you want to hear about the new lineage of the father? The new dynasty of sons? The new destinies that are about to be created and birthed? In the father and God realm for heaven and earth? Destiny, earth, purpose, heaven? I have been given the grace and honor to talk to the fathers and mothers that were before us. Moses, Abraham, Elijah. Jesus is also a father. Paul is a father. Enoch is a father in heaven. Noah is a father. Elijah said to me one time, if the hearts of the children on earth don't turn to the fathers and the hearts of the fathers don't turn to the sons, the earth will be cursed. I asked Elijah, how, how can we lift up the curse on the earth? He said, it's the relationship between the fathers and sons. Not just natural, spiritual also. Do you know why the earth, everybody, do you see what's going on on earth right now? All the killings and everything? That's a curse. You know why? They've taken the fathers out of the house. Most of the fathers are in jail. Or the enemy is fighting the men not to take care of their children. That's how a curse comes on earth. It's when fathers and children are separated. And Elijah was teaching me how to fix it. Because that was his assignment that he didn't get to be done. You know how it's going to be fixed? Raising up millions of sons all around the world. Turn their hearts to the Father. That's how the earth, the curse will be removed. But let me tell you what Mary said. When she was carrying Jesus. Do you know Satan visited her? She said, when I was 17, and I said yes to the Father's will to carry Jesus. Mm -hmm. To carry the Holy Spirit and to carry the Father. Do all of you understand what Mary was carrying? It was very heavy. She was carrying all three Trinity. The Holy Spirit will come upon you, one, and the child in you, and the power of the Most High, three. She was carrying a Trinity birth in her. She said Satan, Satan visited her seven times. Satan himself. And each time Satan came, I started laughing. When she, she was laughing, Jesus was laughing. She said, each time Satan came, he will see Jesus, he will run away. And Mary said to me, in your time, pregnant women 
were cast out Satan. <laughs> Pregnant women were cast out Satan. She said, whenever Jesus, sorry, whenever Satan came to visit her, just like he visited Eve, when she when when Satan saw baby Jesus, the glory from the womb scared him. It cast him out. That's why women go through attacks when they are pregnant. And that's why you need someone to lay hand on you on your womb. It's very important. But look at just look at this. It's a lot of things she said, but I want to get to the, the heart of it because I'm telling all of you right now, this is where your reward is. Honor your father and your mother. That your days on earth will be long. This is why you see a lot of young people on earth dying. They don't listen to their mothers. They don't listen to their fathers and they think they know it all. And that's why many youth are dying. Dying in the streets, to street, to gangs, in prisons. You know why? They've dishonored their mother and fathers on earth. So the enemy has the right to take them early. Mary said to me, I had to give him back to the father at the age of 30. Do you know how, women, do you know how hard that is? To give back your only child? She had, after she gave Jesus back up, she had three more. Two brothers. Jesus had two brothers and one sister. At the age of 12, Mary had to give up her child. Back to the father. That's why at 12, Jesus said, Mother, I must be about my father's business. Do you know how painful that is for your own child to leave you? Women know what I'm talking about. But she paid the price. She gave up her only son. Something Sarah was supposed to do. Sarah was, was the one that was supposed to sacrifice Isaac to the father. She didn't, have, she didn't have the strength to give up her only child. So Abraham did it. Now, what I'm saying tonight, this is for those who want to walk with the father. The father is all about sacrifice and suffering. She said, at, when, when, she said when Jesus was 12, see, she was 31. He was 12. She had to give her only son to the father. Watch this. At 30, she had to release him to the father completely. Your only child, your firstborn. The one she loved the most out of all the children was Jesus. Because when, when Joseph died, Jesus became the man of the house. He was the one running Joseph's business for Mary. And when Jesus was 30, she had to do it a second time. Give Jesus now up completely. Because he was 12, it wasn't fully time to release Jesus to the Father. But she did it the first time. At 30, she fully released her firstborn to the Father. She was the one. Watch this. How many children, how many mothers can watch your own child get beat? She said to me, as I watched the Roman soldiers beat my son, I was feeling the same stripes, wounds, scars, and bruises on my body. So she was crucified too. <laughs> she was the only one who wiped his blood from the floor. Do you see the price she's paying? Do you see the love she has for her son, Jesus? Her heart and her face was set on Jesus throughout all his sufferings. She never turned her face or her heart from her only son. Eventually, her God, her bridegroom, her king, 
they have their relationship is more than just father mother it's more she was the only one at the cross she was the one who took jesus body off the cross what a mother from beginning to the end she was loyal not only because of the mother son relationship but they also had a friendship Because Jesus is not only a man, he's also the son of God. He's also God. He's also a king. So she's able to relate to him on all, her, all his crowns. She's the only woman who knows when Jesus is a king, she knows how to go from mother. See that? She's too much. Any crown Jesus put on, she knows how to submit to. All women need to learn from Mary. You say, how? In your marriages. You're familiar with that man. You don't know when he's a king. You don't know when he's your husband. You don't know when he's a father. You don't know when he's your prophet. You have become too familiar with the man. You've lost honor. And that's what happened with Vashti. Because of her familiarity to the king, all the women in the kingdom dishonored their husband. It split the kingdom into two. Do you see what dishonor does? It split kingdoms. Esther had to come and finish, fix it by showing them this is how you honor the king. I saw Esther in heaven too. But Mary, my mother now, the mother of all brides of Jesus Christ. I mean, in the natural, it makes common sense. When a man's about to marry, what does he do? He goes and introduces mm -hmm, his bride to his parents. Don't he? A man is supposed to take his wife to go to his mother and his father. This is my bride. Or well, that's what Jesus did. He introduced me to his mother and his father in heaven. Not just Joseph. Heavenly father too. See, when you marry Jesus, he introduced you to the entire fam. <laughs> the entire kingdom. This is my bride. The entire kingdom begin to honor you as such. And I love how what Mary said. See, she's a mother, right? She would tell the wife how to love the son right. My God, somebody got to hear that. Let me teach you how to love my son to the end like I did. She's most holy. That's why the Catholics are wrong. But in a way, they are right. Let me tell you why. Because Mary is holy. She's a virgin. She's perfect. She's pure. And they're supposed to honor her, but not worship her. See, you don't pray to Mary. That's wrong. She's not the way to the Father. Jesus is the way to the Father. But you must honor his mother. Because she's the one, she's the only woman who said yes to the Father and Jesus and the Holy Spirit coming on earth. It was a woman who said yes. It was a woman who said yes. And that's why she's highly exalted, not only on earth. She's highly favored above all women in heaven and earth. Mary, she's at the right hand of the father next to her own son who is her God. Do you see how humble she is? That's her son in the natural, but Jesus is her God. <laughs> That's humility, knowing how to change identities for honor. She knows when to be a mother to him. Oh yes, look, in heaven, the, re the relationship, Jesus and the father, uh, sorry, Jesus and her mother have, hasn't changed though, is the same. Guess who comforts Jesus when he's suffering? Mary, his mother. The relationship they had on earth continued in heaven. I was just given the privilege and honor to see it as a bride. She's the one who wiped his blood.
I was talking to one of the daughters today. When a woman is pregnant, the suffering she goes through. Do you know how much suffering Mary went through in those nine months? Spiritually, carrying the one who would, watch this, carrying the seed that was prophesied. Y'all got to understand the prophecy of Eve. Your seed will bruise the head of the serpent. So when Mary was pregnant, what do you think was going on spiritually? They were after the seed, Jesus. Imagine what Mary was going through. Satan visited her seven times, more than Eve. And each time, I was shown a screen, each time Satan would come and he would see baby Jesus. A baby cast him out. Y'all, everyone on the prayer line, if a baby can cast out Satan. Why are you afraid of Satan? And he said to me, she said to, she said to me, a move is coming to Holy Way. Pregnant women in glory. <laughs> I can't wait. Women who are pregnant, they'll be pregnated by the Holy Spirit. And when they go home, that baby in the womb will deliver the entire family. Or oh, it's coming. Women and children movement. It's coming. It will start with the pregnant women. Then after you get, after they give birth to the children, it just manifests greatly. Mary said it will start in Holy Way. How is that going to look? A pregnant woman. Person now say, Ooh, indeed, children. Are for signs and wonders. And what the Bible says, children are for signs and wonders. It's true. But she was telling me how I should love her son even greater. The way she loved him. Don't you want to hear it? How to love Jesus to the end? Because your heart can turn like Peter. Why didn't Peter get close to Mary to learn? Hmm. You realize, can I teach you something? Mary Madeleine learned from Mary. Oh, come on, somebody. Mary Magdalene learned from Mary how to love Jesus. That's why she never stopped kissing him. Mary taught her. See, Mary, Jesus' mother, if you get a visitation from her in heaven, she will teach you how to love Jesus right because that's her son. And a mother knows her son best. So even in the natural, it's right. When a man finds a woman, he obtains favor from God. He needs to go and introduce the woman to the mother first, not even the father. The father is always last because you need your mother's approval. Because she birthed you. That's why it says a man will leave his father and mother's house, you see? And cleave to his wife. But I'm telling you right now, you need the you need Father God's blessing. You need Jesus' mother's blessing in heaven to be with Jesus. It's so natural. The church needs these kind of experiences. Or to love Jesus right, you will have visitations with people who are in heaven in glory. And they will teach you how they love. Jesus, so you can add to your love for him. Jesus said, let me show you my mother's reward for faithfully from beginning she is the woman who suffered for me the most. See, I thought it was John. I thought it was John because John had Jesus' heart. Mm-hmm. It's true. But you see, that's what Jesus told me. But John still left me in the garden. Mary never left. Even though John returned, he returned with Mary. It was Mary that brought John back when he left Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane when the police came. They all left Jesus. And John ran to Mary. Your son has been arrested. 
boldly. She said, let's go. See, everybody, when you, listen, when you get the privilege and honor and Jesus take you to heaven, they play back stories from the past in detail so you can see it. That's, that's what the Bible says. When you get back, wow. See, it's called time travel. It was Mary that gathered everyone and said, we can't leave him. Let's go. Mary Madeleine said yes. M Mary said yes. John said yes. But the others were not there. They were afraid. Peter was afraid. So Peter, for a while, was walking. But when he got to the bond, fire, he denied Jesus three times. Just like Jesus prophesied. Mary never left Jesus' side, especially when he was getting whipped by the Roman soldiers. She was there. What's her reward? Honoring Christ's sufferings by being present. From the beginning of Jesus' life, from zero to 30, the most faithful, the most loyal, the most committed, the most dedicated person, my brother, is my mother. I was shocked. I thought it was John. She is the mother of all my brides. Uh, she also paid the price for you. Hey, all of you, in the secret place, do you know in heaven, right? They are praying for us. It's called the cloud of witnesses. It's in the Bible. The cloud of witnesses is praying for us. The saints in heaven, the saints in glory, they are praying for us. Watch this. If you're going to walk with God like Enoch, Enoch prays for you. If you're going to walk with God face to face, Moses prays for you in heaven. They are praying to the Father that you will walk in what they walk and greater. And Jesus also makes intercession for us to watch this, to do greater works than him. I love when Jesus said, your mother, she's now your mother. And when I got on earth, I knew I must honor mothers even greater. Because all their children, mothers that you gave birth to, those children are deliverers, healers. All your children have Christ in them to a certain state until they reach 12. That's why, watch this. And I will teach this openly when the time comes. You got to train your children from 1 to 12. Because after 12, Watch this. If you didn't train them like Mary trained Jesus, after 12, she had to release him. After 12, your children are supposed to be about the father's business. You know that, right? Train up a child the way they should go. That in the end, they will not depart from it. You know why many children are departing from their children? You didn't train them. That's going to change in our generation. Believe that. Because watch this. Abraham all the families of the earth was blessed through him. So the family mountain we're going to target in this end time. The family mountain. Because the enemy attacked family. It's called broken home. His job is to take the father house, out and leave women with children. That's the enemy's plan. Once I can take the head, mm -hmm, see, Strike the shepherd, the sheep will scatter. Once I can strike the head, the father, I can get the mother and the children. That's the attack of the enemy. That's going to change in our generation. When the glory of the father come on earth, houses are going to be in order. Fathers are coming home. Those who are in prison, the father told me they're coming out. Yeah, that's right. When the father come on earth, all those in prison are coming out. Fathers who have been put in prison innocently, they're coming out. Reconcile. The ministry of reconciliation is the Father. The ministry of restoration is Jesus. 
the ministry of resurrection is the Holy Spirit. Reconciliation is coming on earth. Mm -hmm. But everybody take note. How is your honor with your father and your mother? You can't say you love Jesus and you don't honor your father and your mother. Hey, dude. All of us, it's going to happen. It's my heart desire. You need visitations to heaven. That's where heavenly wisdom is downloaded. That's, that's how Paul was caught up to the third heaven. And he saw things that were unspeakable. Some things, look, it's so many things I want to share. He said, it's not time. So many I want to share with you all. Because I love to give. So many things I want to share with you. I can't even post it. Father, please, can I share this? He says, son, it's not time. Be patient. So many is going to happen. It's going to help our generation, for sure, and generations to come. Revelations is what brings about change. Mary. She's the ultimate woman. If she's the closest to the Father, we should all learn from her. The, the only woman from beginning to the end, was by Jesus. Her prayers to the Father is the most holy. Her tears to the Father is the most holy tears. She's over the brides of Jesus Christ. All the brides on, her, on earth, she's the one who is praying for them in heaven. That's what mothers are supposed to be doing on earth Praying for the wives of their sons. They ain't doing it. They are jealous. Mother-in-laws. Uh-oh. Okay. I'm going to get in trouble in this generation, but it's all right. We're going to fix houses. We're going to fix the homes. By revelation, mothers are supposed to be praying for the wives of their, of their, of their sons. That's what Mary does in heaven. She prays for the brides of Jesus to never leave him. <laughs> holy prayers I saw one she just bent down on one knee and a tear dropped the father picked it up he said I will never allow her tears to drop to the ground the moment she knelt down and she she didn't open her mouth tears is her prayers Mary she don't talk the moment she knew is tears that speaks. She don't speak with words. Some of you, some of you are like that. You just cry. You don't you have no words. You becoming like Mary. And she was crying. It was falling down her cheeks. And I was just watching a mother crying. And one drop. And before it would hit the earth or hit the ground, the father's hand came and scooped, scooped it up. He said, I will never let her tears drop to the ground. I will fulfill. Hey, women. See, can I be honest? Sometimes when I tell women about these, they think, oh, you don't want me to marry. Okay, that's between you and God. Oh, you don't want me to marry. <clears throat> okay. If marriage is what you want, go and marry. This is for those who love the Father and Jesus more than anything. And they are worthy of it to tell you. And I'm going to be honest. I'm going to tell you the truth. Mary did not remarry after Joseph died. She told me, I love the father and my son and his son more than marriage. So she too could have married again. She sacrificed it. To be with Jesus to the end, like the father told her. Loyal, faithful. Why wouldn't she be rewarded the closest woman ever? She's the closest woman to the Father. When I was taken to the most holy place, she was the only woman there. I said, wow. Then the Father started explaining to me her sacrifice and her suffering for him. Her womb 
to go through birth pains. Her body to go through birth pains for him. Because carrying the son of God is not easy on a human being. Her womb had to be prepared. That's why she had to be a virgin. You say, what is the reward in that? There's reward in sacrifice and suffering for the Father and Jesus. There's reward in honoring those who are doing as such. And the way Jesus honored his mother, uh, I say, yeah, I need to honor my mother more. Thank you, mom, for giving birth to me. Thank you, mom, for suffering for me. You didn't have to have me because she, because my mom was going to abort me. But you had me because she couldn't have a child. We have to honor our mothers and we have to honor our fathers, spiritual and natural. The father is watching. This comes with what? A promise. How many of you want to enter the promised land? You got to honor the... See, when God came to Moses, what did he say? I'm the God of your fathers. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Mm -hmm. It was because of Abraham, the father of faith, that God sent Moses. Come on, somebody. In this time and season, we must enter the father's rest for revelation, for rewards, and for release. But in order for that to manifest, your heart, you cannot honor with your lips and your heart is far. That's what Jesus said. They honor me with their lips, but their heart is far. That honor is lip service. It's not humility. So on earth, you need meekness. For God to do anything on earth for you, you need meekness. And meekness is honoring your father and mother. You may say, okay, what if I don't have a, a natural father? You have a spiritual father. Have you found him? Because God will always give you a stepfather when the natural father is not there. When my natural father was not there, the father sent me to my spiritual father. If your spiritual father is not there, he will send you a patriarchal father, one higher than a spiritual father. But you see, that spiritual father thing has also been abused in the church. Control, manipulation. No, spiritual fathers don't control your life. They bring you to the father in Jesus. That's their responsibility. Not to control you, but to lead you. Lead you to Jesus. Just as Jesus led me to the father, I learned that from him as a father. Lead the sons and daughters to the father in Jesus. That's it. Lead them. Walk them to the Father in Jesus. That's it. That way you are, you, you are dependent on Him and the Father. In this time and season, you need to build an honor system in your heart. There's different levels. Hmm. I was talking to this company of women. They were like, what? Uh, I'm not doing that. I said, you have a Jezebel spirit. You asked. I said, do you know you're supposed to not only honor your husband and reverence your husband, but the highest level is worship your husband? Oh, they got mad. They got offended. So let me show you in the Bible. Worship means to kiss. I said, Sarah, call her husband my Lord. Have you ever called your husband at home, my Lord? Oh, I never knew that. Yeah, you're falling short, sis. The holy women of old called their husbands, my Lord. My Lord is an act of worship. Mm -hmm. My king. And I said, all you women on this line are out of order. Oh, I wasn't playing with them. 
You say, how? Why are you calling your husband babe? Why are you calling him honey? When you call, whatever you call him, that's what he's going to become. So you call him baby, you're going to act like a baby. Your mouth has life and death in it. And whatever you call him, that's what he will be. That's why women, your mouths are powerful. It can build or tear. So you got to be meek and quiet. As I told one woman, your husband is not where he is right now because you're not paying the price for him. Oh, she got mad. <laughs> I said, a woman is supposed to be the gardener of the garden. Dressing and keeping the kingdom of the king. There are rewards in relationships. They got mad. I said, then why did you call me to this conference? You thought I was going to sugarcoat it? No, this is royalty. This is kingdom. Honor and love must be restored in relationships. Husband, love your wives as Christ loved the church. If he don't love you the way Jesus loved, he's not your husband. There are rewards. Watch this. Okay, you say, what's a reward? It says, husbands, watch this, husbands, honor your wives that your prayers don't be hindered. If a, if a husband don't honor his wife, God don't reward his prayers. Mm -hmm. Everybody, you get it? Just ask, if you don't honor a prophet, you don't get a prophet's reward? A husband will not get God's reward if he don't honor his wife. Your prayers, men, your prayers will be hindered if you don't honor your wife. So, you see the consequences of dishonor? If a man don't love his wife as Christ loved the church, the gates of hell will prevail. Mm -hmm. Same thing. Husbands, honor your wives that your prayers don't be. So why are so many husbands' prayers hindered? They're not honoring their wives how God honors them same thing wives submit to your husband as unto the Lord submission watch this submit to God resist the devil and he will flee you know why the devil is visiting many women they're not submitted to God or their husband so they can't resist the devil and he's not fleeing and he's using their mouth to tear down the man submit to God one Resist the devil too, and he will flee. Why is the devil not leaving you in your marriage? You're not submitted to God. So how can you resist him? And he's not going to flee. And it says Christ is the head of the man. So when you submit to the man, you submit it to the Lord. Order. But that Jezebel spirit is independent. It doesn't want to submit to anyone. I am God. Mm -hmm. That Jezebel spirit doesn't want to submit to one another. How many of us want the Father to reward us? I'm letting you know right now, look on earth. He's looking at your relationships. I've given you just, I've given you about three or four. Love your enemies. Then your reward will be in heaven. But what about rewards on earth? Honor your father and mother. You get a promise, you get a reward, you get inheritance. Can you see? Honoring the prophet, you get a prophet's reward. You see? Honoring your pastor, what do you get? Maybe tomorrow I'll talk about how you, how you honor the fivefold. If you honor an apostle, what do you get? If you honor a prophet, what do you get? If you honor a teacher, what do you get? If you honor an evangelist, what do you get? When you honor the fivefold, there is, watch this. There are rewards God has put in each office for you to receive. Like, for example, when you honor a pastor, wolves will not come around you. Wolves in sheep clothing, meaning a wolf cannot take you if you honor your pastor. God will keep wolves from your life when you honor your shepherd. So you wonder why all these false prophets and, and, and wolves are coming to people? I know why. They're not honoring their pastors. Not prophet. See, watch this. When you honor a prophet, God keep you from Jezebel. Okay, I don't want to talk about it tonight, tomorrow. There are rewards of protection. When you honor, 
what God has put in place called government. I don't need no one. All I need is God. Mm. Okay, continue. You cannot come into the kingdom if you don't honor the government of the king. And the, gov the governor of the kingdom has set up governors and tutors until the appointed time of the father. The fivefold is one. Is the defense of God. The church is God's defense, not offense. The kingdom is the offense. The church is the defense. So that's why it says, I'll build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail. The church is the defense of God. The kingdom is the offense. When you come to church, you are in defense mode. Who is defending you? Apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, evangelists. You Watch this on the line. You got to have at least three in your life. An apostle, a prophet, and a, at least a teacher. Those three are the foundation of the church. Who is your apostle? Who is your prophet? Who is your teacher? That's church. Then we come into the kingdom. Father. See, who is your, who's your father? Father is the highest. All these are important. So maybe tomorrow... Maybe I should share it today. Maybe tomorrow. See the fivefold ministry? What they each do. And when you honor someone who God has put in that office, the rewards you get for honoring them. That's what it says. If you honor a prophet in the name of a prophet, you receive a prophet's reward. You know how many rewards are in the prophetic? A prophet? Over, over 50. I can list to you. One, let me tell you one. It says, believe in the Lord your God and you will be established. Mm -hmm. Believe in his prophets and you will prosper. When you honor a prophet, you start prospering immediately. No, I'm talking about his prophets. Not Satan's prophets. Because Satan got prophets. It says, believe his prophets. Not your prophet. His prophets that he sent to you. You will prosper. See? So, Ah, if we had time, we'll, we'll have time because this season is all about honoring and rewards. I'm telling you. I just gave you one. It says, by a prophet, God brought them out of Egypt. And by a prophet, he preserved them. When you are around a prophet, God take you out of Egypt and he preserve you. And by a prophet, he take you into the promised land. Who is your prophet? That's important. And do you know the type of prophet you need? You need a face-to-face -face prophet in your life. That one will lead you face-to-face -face with the Father in Jesus. You don't need any kind of prophet who can just prophesy. You need one who can turn your heart to the Father. Face-to-face -face prophet and a face-to-face -face friend. It's the office. It's not about them. See, I just gave you one, right? Watch this. If there be a prophet among you, I make, my, I make myself known in visions and I speak to him in a dream. When you're around prophets, visions and dreams increase in your life. You realize I didn't, oh, let's go to school. Uh, I have a syllabus out. No, 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 no. When you are born a prophet, you teach it. Most of these people are not born prophets. They went to school and learned it. No, when you are born one, you can teach. You don't have to, okay, what's my notebook? Teaching on the prophetic. Those people are not prophets. They want your money. Yeah, I said it. They want your money. Come and have a prophetic school, $5,000. What? $5,000 for what? You, not, you, you, not, you don't even carry no weight spiritually. I ain't coming to your conference. Yeah, I said it. $5,000 for your conference, and I look at you spiritually, and you are an idiot. Yeah, I said it. And you are, people are wasting their money going places. No wonder you're not growing spiritually. Because you, God did not lead you to his prophet. You went to your favorite prophet. That's why you're not growing. A prophet? When you're around a prophet, you get revelations and secrets every day. Because God will not do anything on earth unless he reveals mm -hmm, secrets to his prophet. When you're around a prophet, you get dreams, you get visions, but you also get revelations and secrets of heaven and earth.
the rewards of being around one. Oh, my friends, there's so much more being around the prophets. For example, um, Daniel, when you're around a Daniel type of prophet, your dreams are going to be interpreted. See, when you're around a Daniel, Daniel was a prophet and a dreamer. Do you see the rewards of being? Now, I, I just thought about the prophet. What about the king? The rewards of being around a king. The rewards, are, the, the rewards of being around an emperor. The rewards of being around a son. The rewards of being around a bride. The rewards being around, Jesus has put those things in them. And as you honor them, you are honoring him. What's the reward of honoring a father? Uh, so everybody, do you see? God has hidden his rewards in his offices, in his true sons, brides, and prophets on earth. Now, there are not many true prophets. It's few. In Elijah's time, God hid 7,000 from Jezebel. Take note of that. How is your honor? Nothing will manifest on earth if you don't honor. Honor opens heaven. How many of us are ready to receive from the Father in heaven? This is it. You have to give honor. That's why it's called thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Are you thankful and grateful? Take note. So in this season, if you want to walk with Jesus and the Father in heaven and earth, and he said, I'm coming with my reward, he's going to reward you according to the works of your hand, the works of your heart, honor. As a matter of fact, you can't even have faith without honor. Faith works, see, faith without works is dead. Honor is a work. And you know how honor is tested? When you see someone's dirt. <laughs> when you see someone's dirt, you can stop honoring them. Because now you've got, watch that you've seen their dirt and the dirt covers the treasure. So the moment you see someone's dirt, your honor goes down. You're in trouble. Because then when your honor goes down, your humility goes down too. See, it's like a phone. Many honor you with their lips, but their hearts are far from you. Mm. The heart is what the Father's looking at, not the lips. That's what Jesus said in his time. They honor me with their lips, but their heart is far. Wow. He knew their honor was not real. There was no humility coming from their honor. Rabbi, he knew it wasn't real. So in this time and season, if God leads you to one of his, in them is hidden. So it says, it's the glory of God to conceal a thing. In them is concealed things pertaining to your peace. You're not honoring, you're not honoring them based on what you can get from them. No. You honor them for who they are to him. And that's how. You start walking in, ah, maybe tomorrow I'll do it. 
what are rewards of being what, what are the rewards of honoring a teacher a dreamer an evangelist a pastor i'm talking about his pastors because most of these pastors are not his pastors they're not after god's heart they don't love the sheep they they feed on the sheep yeah i said that too they feed on the sheep they don't feed the sheep mm. oh it's written in jeremiah jeremiah began to rebuke all the pastors in his day that they feed they become fat of the sheep mm. have you realized in some churches the pastor is rich and all the congregation is poor can you imagine that the pastor is rich but the, the entire congregation is struggling Mm -hmm. That's a sheep in wolf clothing. Mm -hmm. Do you know the sheep are supposed to be rich and wealthier more than you, the shepherd? That's what Paul said. Oh, my friend, things are about to change drastically in the body of Christ. The, the goats are going to be removed and the shepherds after his heart will remain. After his heart, not after your pockets. Jesus name. So please remember, honor reverence worship this is royalty this is kingdom but the western society is carnal when you go to other other countries especially the middle east it's royal and royalty is loyalty Is, is kingdom. It was 11.30 tonight. Let's touch and agree again. All 29 of you on the line, kindly before we end, just type, Father, I touch and agree in Jesus' name for the heart of honor towards my neighbor. He will give you that heart. And then be attentive to whom you need to honor in this season. Because if you honor them, he's going to honor you. Jesus says, where my, where my servants is, my father honors. So type it right now. Father, give me a heart of honor. Touch and agree. No. Give me the heart of honor. And agree with your heart and your hand in this season with a heart of honor. Mm -hmm. Let's write it down. Let's write it down in the chat. Decree it before we end. Decree it tonight. May that decree. May that decree. May the decree tonight before we end. Thank you, Jesus. I'm telling you, people are going to be coming to you, honoring you. Don't reject them because there's something in you God has for them. Receive it and give the glory to God. They're not only coming, they're not only coming to honor you. When you receive the honor, give the glory to God. You see? Honor goes with glory. So when you receive honor, give the glory to God. And then God going to give them. See? Yes, Lord. Yeah, so before we end,
Felix or Michelle or Art or even anybody else. Do you want to, is there anything you want to share? It's a little bit, not too long, about honor and how we, we have to love our neighbor. Just said, love ye one another as I have loved you. So before we end, anybody have anything to share before we end tonight? Please don't be long. Just to share a word of before we end tonight. Oh, please, yes, tomorrow by grace also, I will give the instruction for the 21 day fast we're going to be doing. Mm hmm. Anybody else tonight? Well, amen. Well, if anyone doesn't have any questions tonight, there's a time for everything. It's a time to rest. Let us continue to be at the feet of Jesus. Very, very, very important. And let us not miss our time or visitation in this season. So God bless each and every one of you for your commitment dedication to what he's saying and doing in our time and season and the best is yet to come the best is yet to come so love you all god bless you all in jesus name shalom good morning <laughs>